Oh wait, move. She's in my chair. This just might be my favorite video of all time that I'm about to share. We're talking about how to, I have my notes. I got, I, I know what I'm talking about today, okay? We're talking about how to have main character energy. I'm not even gonna explain what it is because if you clicked on this video, you have probably already watched a bazillion, trillion, million videos on it and you're just like feeding into this need to know more and have certainty, but I will be here for you and I will share my own little perspective and opinion and something that works, works for me because God damn it, I know I have main character energy. I'm embodying it, I am serving, and I'm here to serve to you. So without further ado, um, let me introduce myself. Oh my goodness, how rude of me. My name is Emma, this is my channel, Self Growth Uncensored. We talk about self-love, we talk about confidence, we talk about feminine energy, we talk about life, we talk about the great parts, the sad parts, everything, okay? Uh, and yeah, let's just, let's just get straight into it with number one, actually no, I'm gonna tell you first of all, as a little prerequisite, what I'm not gonna tell you in this video, and that is, I'm not gonna tell you to just be happy. I'm not gonna tell you to just stop caring about what other people think about you. I'm not gonna tell you just go to the gym, just work hard in school, just um, do better, be better, just embody yourself and like make a vision board and just be confident, goddammit, because this is information that doesn't do shit. I'm sorry, I just burped. Excuse me. It doesn't do shit. Okay? It feels good. Oh my god. It feels so good to just hear people talk about just be happy. Just be your best version of yourself. Just go into the world and make fucking like the cure to cancer and you know, blah, yada, 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 yada. And just improve yourself forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. No, it, it gets a little old. It gets old. I'm not gonna lie because... I, I, I hear all these things and I hear these people talking about stuff and then I finish the video. I'm like, okay, I have all this information and knowledge. Like, what do I do with it? Like, people will literally go on a rant for an hour and then by the end of the video, I don't know. Calm, Jesus. I don't know what I just listened to. Like, went in one ear straight out the other so we're we're not going to be giving those like basic surface level tips i'm going to share with you what like the physicality of it and how that is what uh, is what propels me to really embody my main character energy let's get into it number one remember how i just told you that i'm not going to tell you to just be a confident that is because confidence is not something that you can just like turn on not for everybody at least, it is something that is built. You are able to turn your confidence on just like that and embody it once you have built the foundation for it. That is the, the little puzzle piece that I feel is missing from all of these self-help videos. You can't just be it, you gotta build it first, okay? So you might ask, Emma, how do I build confidence? Let's talk about it. You cannot fully love yourself unless you love the dark side of yourself, unless you love your insecurities, your flaws, your imperfections. You wanna know how to increase your self-worth? Love the shitty part of yourself. When you're in bed, sick, depressed, alone, do you still think you're worthy? When you, um, when you had a math test and you completely failed it and you kind of like fucked it up do you still love yourself if you did someone dirty and really uh did something that you probably shouldn't have done and made an honest human mistake do you still love yourself if you answered no to any of those questions you gotta keep working on your self-love and your self-worth until you can answer yes to those questions I always say, treat yourself like you would treat your best friend. You would still love your best friend and you still do love your best friend even though they have flaws, even though they're not perfect. Once 
you can own your insecurities. If people come at you sideways or they try to target those insecurities, you, they're not gonna get a reaction out of you. They're gonna get a response instead, which is so freaking powerful. People don't hold the power over you when you can like, when someone's like literally says fuck you to your face, like they're like, fuck you, I hate your hair, it's disgusting. If you can just be like, okay. And? Like, what are they gonna say to that? <laughs> I love this example that I heard. It was, um, uh, it was like, imagine someone comes up to you and they're like, I hate your blue hair. You, it's disgusting. And taking that you don't have blue hair. Okay, if you have blue hair, this is a bad, ex this is a bad example for you. Okay, let's just, hold on. Let me choose a color that's like really out there. I hate your rainbow colored hair. I don't feel like a lot of people have rainbow colored hair. Okay, it's disgusting. If someone were to say that to your face, you'd be like, I don't have rainbow hair like, like what do you mean it wouldn't get an internal reaction and like emotion enveloped out of you because you know and you have the identity and belief that like dude I, I don't have rainbow hair like what the fuck are you talking about so if if someone is able to get a reaction out of you it's because some part of you feels insecure and like like doesn't like that part of yourself if if someone can like like come at you sideways and it bothers you it's because like, you, you can pretend like it doesn't bother you, but deep down, you know it does. So the best solution for that is to get to a spot in yourself where you're like, yeah, fuck you. Um, I actually love that part about myself and I don't even need to give you a reaction because like, why would I do that? That's a waste of my time. That's a waste of my energy. Hello. Ooh, I love this one. Um, to, to, uh, <laughs> to build confidence, you need to start doing things that other people refuse to do. Do things that make you so uncomfortable and just like out of your little your little happy home safe zone because nobody else does it. And when you do things that nobody else does, you become rare. You become the black sheep and people admire that. Like Okay, here's an example go out to dinner with yourself and don't go on your phone well first of all going out to dinner yourself that's already out of your comfort zone but not going on your phone as well double down read a book instead the triple threat like oh my god who is this girl who is she that's what i would think oh my god if i saw a girl just like chilling and having a little solo date by herself reading a fucking book i'd want to be her friend i want to walk over and be like can I talk to you? Like, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt your little, like, little moment, but like, you're so intriguing and you just have such main character energy and I'm living for it. Uh, but yeah, do things that make you so uncomfortable. Like, do take yourself um, out to places alone. Like, like, go against the norm. Like, that is just so intriguing and so magnetizing we are used to the things that we see on the day-to-day -day. so if you see someone and they're not following in line what other people are automatically attractive automatically main character energy number three for building confidence is to put effort into your appearance and by appearance yes of course i mean like physicality your makeup your hair your outfit but i also mean like embodying the other senses so making sure that you smell good and making sure that um like like in your body language this is so important you can be like all dolled up and everything but if your body language is very insecure and kind of folding into yourself that is not main character energy like stand up straight okay stand up straight put your shoulders back chin up and walk around the world like that when i tell you people are going to be looking people are going to be <coughs> wondering i tell you i'll tell you that straight up body language is key like you will you will attract such good people when you have good body language and just by having that alone 
people are actually gonna come up to you and be like, oh my God, like they're just gonna perceive you as confident. I've met people um, like in school and whatnot and then they, they just like automatically tell me like, yeah, like I could tell like, you're such a confident person. I'm like, I didn't have to say that to them. I didn't have to tell them that. Confidence is a very silent thing. If someone is um, boasting and being like, yeah, like I'm so fucking confident, like <laughs> look at me. You can bet your ass they're the most insecure little fuck you'll ever meet. Because the confident people, the truly confident people, they don't, they don't tell you that. They don't tell you that they're confident. You, they just are. They just are. Just like happy people, they don't tell you like, oh yeah, I'm so, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. They just are. They just embody it. Like they don't question it. It's just like a part of who they are. Their being as a human, and that is just so alluring. Okay, number four for being confident is to be authentic and to be authentic is to decide and it is a conscious action to not give a fuck about other people's opinions. We're building confidence here. How do we build confidence? We, we embody the, the, the traits of people who are confident, okay? So yes, I'm not gonna just tell you to be confident. I'm gonna tell you how, okay? To be authentic is to be authentic confident when you are able to show up into a room full of strangers and be yourself and decide not to care if they like that or not holy fuck <laughs> main character energy huh <laughs> served please oh my god i'm sure it, you, you've definitely met these people in your life where they walk into a room and everybody's looking at them Nobody knows them, nobody's spoken a word to them, but they just know they are an it person. It's the way they carry themselves. It's the way that they can just laugh, their genuine laugh. They can just smile without like covering their hand over their mouth. They can talk to anybody and not care about who they are. Like something that I've ha been having to learn recently is when because i started catering and i'm surrounded by people oh my god i have a hair on my lip hold on anyway i'm surrounded by people who are a lot older than me uh usually have a lot more money than me are um just like i guess you could say oh my god are you kidding me i got it i got it i got it are important people okay and at first going into that i felt really nervous because i felt kind of like like a little girl and just like small and ooh, like scared. But then I was like, no, um, after I was talking to my dad, he's like, you gotta just treat the people like no matter what their title is, like people and really just take them off that pedestal. When you take people off pedestals, you can actually see them for what they are being like just a regular flawed, like human being with like flesh and skin, you know, that's what they are. Their title does not matter. How much money they have, it does not matter. And you need to kind of put your blinders on to those sort of things because once you are able to take people off a pedestal, you're not gonna be like looking up at them and be like, wow, you're so amazing. Like, no, like just look at them and see them as like just as worthy as you are. Just a human being, just a human being. You know, like you breathe, they breathe. You walk, they walk. Take them off the pedestal because what, you're gonna be able to be yourself. You're gonna be able to be yourself. Just like you're able to be authentic with someone who's very, uh, like a lot younger than you, pretend that people that uh, you actually look up to are younger than you because then you can just be yourself and talk and say the things that you'd actually say and not just kind of like, sugarcoat or say what you think is impressive or sounds cool or like that meshes well people like other people who can not care like who can just dis um what's the word not disassociate it's um detach that's the word oh my god that took me forever to think about Detached people are so alluring. They're so magnetism, magnetizing and they just give off main character energy. Okay, so that was section one for the whole how to build your main character energy is to build confidence. 
The second one is to be in your feminine energy, okay? I'm not sure if this listener knows what feminine energy is, so I'll just go over it really quickly. But it's basically being in your receiving mode, like in your flow state, really in your body, like the masculine is in your head, the feminine is in the body, and just like enveloping the um, the classic feminine traits being like nurturing, kind, empathetic, um, flow states, all of all of like that that sort of like area of of qualities and traits okay so the thing about the feminine the feminine is that it will attract the masculine and it's very very magnetizing for 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 men and for boys or like whatever to love femininity i mean it's just basics of our nature to receive and to be happy and to be light and not full of so much like dark and heaviness like it's hard to be around people who are super heavy all the time and that's not to say that you shouldn't be there for them and support them but at the end of the day it's not your job to fix other people's emotions and to be quite frank you can't you can love someone so deeply and want to help them so, so much more than anything in the world, but we can only truly help and change ourselves. We cannot change other people, nor is it our obligation to do that. So by being in your feminine energy, you allow yourself to receive. And when, when you allow yourself to receive and just lay back and let life happen to you and let the right people the right circumstances the right opportunities to come to you you're creating space you're allowing that space nothing ever works out when you desperately want something desperately like you're you're chasing it you're wanting it you're desiring it like have you ever heard of someone doing that and then things work out for them no it's almost always almost always and i'd even argue always when we're in a spot of abundance and peace and not needing something when it'll finally come towards us law of attraction hello um <laughs> but being in your receiving it, it's not giving desperate energy and you know what is not desperate main character energy main character energy is about being like hey you know like i'm cool in myself I'm loving myself. I'm in my own world, my own energy. When you are in your own energy, people will gravitate towards you naturally. Like if I were to get really close and be like, ah, can you like the video? Can you subscribe? Like, yo, that is so repelling. Where is that? If I were to just be like this, be like, hey, like, cool. Like, here's my thoughts. Here's what I have to think. If you like it, stay. And if you don't like it, leave. Like, I, I don't care. Like, that's fine. That is so much more attractive and so much more like intriguing than coming off as a desperate person who just needs, 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 needs and can never embody and just like be in their own energy. Um, you know what? I might as well share like a little bit of tips on feminine energy and like embodying it. I have a video on that, but that was a while ago. But I think it still holds up, you know, like if you want to go watch that on how to uh, get into your feminine energy. But right off the bat, something that comes up is to is to dance, because like I said, being in your feminine energy is all about being in your body. So by dancing, you're literally like releasing stored energy like we, we store a lot of stress in our hips. So if you can just kind of like like shake your ass a little bit to some music that's gonna be really healing for you, like for real. And that's why exercise is such a fucking key and like component to us as human beings to be happy is we have to release stored energy. Have you ever, <laughs> it's gonna sound so awful. <laughs> have you ever seen in a movie like, um, like a person um, being at the gym and just like being like, like they're just like massively depressed and it's just like sad music them at the gym and just like 
melancholy like no they're almost always in a bed they're almost always staring at the ceiling or just in in stillness but then once they decide they're like they wake up one day the sun is out and it's like i gotta get my life together man like i gotta i gotta i gotta, I gotta fix this and then cue the upbeat music and then Boom, filming them going to the gym. Boom, they're moving, they're working, they're, they're going out with friends, they're at the bar, they met a girl, you know? I, I mean, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but <laughs> the whole point is to like move your body and get out of stillness and get in to movement. Like give your brain some food for thought. Let me think of another thing. Oh, this is so great. To be in your receiving, receiving energy, let men open doors for you. Like if it comes, if you're gonna go um, into a store and you go, you get to the door at the same time as a man, don't, no, just like, just stand there, just stand there. And I'm honestly, like, I've, I've never really had a scenario where they didn't open it for me, but I think that's just because I've practiced it so much and it's like a mutually beneficial experiment because men love to give. They love to protect and provide. It's in their nature, okay? It's in their the DNA, the DNA. Um, and it makes you feel so good because it puts you in your feminine receiving energy. So both of y'all are just like vibing, like, like two strangers just vibing. And every time that happens, like I feel like I just automatically smile because I feel like so good and like, oh. He opened the door for me. And then like the guy always smiles too because he feels like he's like um, like being so chivalrous and like a gentleman to a, la a fellow lady in the world, you know? It's just such a good situation. And it, it might um, feel a little uncomfortable at first, especially if you've never allowed yourself to kind of receive just like like help from, from specifically men and just like the masculine figure. Um, but as you practice it more, it just like, it starts to feel better and better to be in your feminine. Trust me, I was so fucking in my masculine energy for a long, long time. And I I kind of assign the reasoning for that because I was in a very, very highly competitive sport, like basically my entire childhood. And that kind of like put me in that mode. Um, and I was super against like, the whole feminine energy receiving mode like it it repelled me and i was like what the fuck that's sexist like i can do everything myself like i'm such i'm an independent baddie like i don't need anyone to do anything for me and i can do everything myself like that was me that was a hundred percent me but as i started to gradually learn more about the feminine energy and once i recognized that no it's not just a way to get women back into the kitchen I was like, oh shit, like this feels so much better. This feels so much better than that go, 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 like masculine action, like I need to do everything myself mentality. Like that was a struggle, not gonna lie. I didn't even realize how hard that was until I stepped out of it and came to the other side. Okay, section three on how to have main character energy is to embody being more enigmatic. That's a fancy word. Um, another word for enigmatic is mysterious or just more private. A great example I can think of right off the bat is Angelina Jolie. You know what that dark femme fatale energy? I'm such like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm being a little bit of a hypocrite when I say this because it's something that I struggle with too, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna still share it because it's something I'm actively working on and that is oversharing. Okay, stop oversharing or at least start to train yourself to overshare a little bit less. A few a few months ago, I was definitely the type of person that like open book, I will share anything to everyone and like like you don't have to know me that well to like know everything about me. <laughs> and honestly, like, there's nothing magnetizing about that because then you're just gonna know everything about everyone and then you're like, you're not curious at all to learn more about them because you already know everything. They already told you their life story. They already told you their deepest regrets and their darkest times. Um, there's nothing else to uncover. And 
it also kind of like without saying it it's like you don't you don't feel like you're special to them because if someone is not an overshare and they're very private and then they tell you things that really hurt them in the past or like their deepest darkest struggles you have more value on that person because you understand that they don't tell that to everyone like they don't share that shit just like with any joe schmo on the street with any like with anyone it becomes so much more of a value in that person um like when, when someone values you like you value them it's kind of i forget what that uh like that little behavior was called but it's a phenomenon for real for real so by by not oversharing this in, in real practice this can mean when you meet someone and you just have like that instant connection for me like i have a feeling like oh my god like i love this person so much and i just want to share everything with them when you get that urge that feeling that desire let yourself feel it and process it but then decide to wait a little bit longer the best time to share um like an intimate um experience i don't i mean um i <laughs> i uh that came out wrong when you next time you're um wanting to share like a like a, let me say secret okay mm, i can't next time you want to share with someone like something that you went through and that was really hard and once they know that thing like they'll know you as a person be it in a state where you're not feeling like so freaking like like wanting to share it with them, like be in a more neutral um, headspace where you're like, okay, like I feel like I'm ready to share this thing with this person. Like timing is everything. Uh, the best time is probably when you guys are on a sleepover, uh, like having one of those late night talks or just like hanging out in private, not in like a high energy situation because that's not really the time and place to have a, a serious discussion. But by being a less oversharing and more private person, it just has an aura of mystery. And why Why do you think we love mystery, like thriller movies? It's because we wanna know, like we wanna know the mystery. We wanna solve the mystery. We wanna solve the case. We wanna find the thing, you know? So by keeping some things to yourself, it's also going to protect you because I'll be honest, not everyone has great intentions and you don't seriously know somebody for quite a while. Like I want to say at least six months. Um, yeah. Don't be that person that just meets someone overnight and be like, yeah, this is my best friend. Like, no, you don't even know that person. You might like have an instant chemistry and like an instant bond where you feel like you've known each other your whole life, but Babe, I promise you that's just like the hormones like literally like going crazy out of whack and like fucking like hella oxytocin, hella dopamine, serotonin. It's just like you're being bombarded and being blinded by emotions. Practice being able to experience that and not oversharing. People can use information against you and information is one of those things where once you share it, once it's out there, you can't take it back. So be careful, uh, dear God, please be careful with how much you share to other people and who you share it with. All right, in my last uh, chapter section on how to have main character energy is to embody being a high value woman. In my eyes, being high value means being able to say no and to set boundaries with people. If you're um, not available and somebody asks you to hang out, don't cancel those plans for them. Don't like disregard the plans that you had for yourself just to make that other person happy and to people please and, and everything because that it, 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 it'll bite you in the ass, honestly. If you're always available, I'm gonna I'm be blunt. 
people don't like you as much. Like, that's why we all like the bad boys is they're hard to get. They're not always accessible. They're always busy, you know? Like, it's very magnetizing to, to have that. And I'm not saying to use that as a manipulate as a manipulation tactic, like the whole like texting rule and no contact rule and like, oh, wait three days after uh, your date rule. Like I, I, I think that's fucking childish and some middle school shit, but being able to say no when you genuinely don't want to say yes. Don't say no to things just for like the sake of saying no, even if you really want to, like, no. <laughs> If a guy's trying to like do stuff with you um, or like if you're the kind of person that doesn't want to kiss on the first date and like he goes in to kiss you on a first date, uh, say no. And don't be afraid because it's not going to be like, he's not going to run away when you say that. He's not going to be like, oh, you don't want to kiss like, oh, bye. Yeah, you know, unless he's like a fuck boy, like then why are you on a date with him anyway? No, if he's a good guy, like a genuine, healthy, masculine man. He's going to value that no. And most importantly, he's going to honor that no, okay? And setting boundaries, something that is so important when it comes to boundaries, just like confidence, most boundaries are silent. Uh, just like uh, confidence is silent, boundaries are silent. If you have to verbally tell somebody, um, I don't like it when you do this thing, multiple times like one time maybe okay maybe one time but once that's out there there's no repeating it like you need to carry yourself with that boundary if you i i genuinely believe this okay let's just say you have the belief i don't kiss on the first day like it's a no for me or you know what let's let's make it let's make it even more like i don't go home with someone on the first day okay if you have that belief and that identity, you're going to carry yourself, your body language, your eye contact, the way you dress, the way you look, the way you act, the, the way that you um, speak, you're going to carry all of those things with that belief in the back of your mind and it is going to, it's going to show up in those actions, okay? I believe that that man will not ask you to like hey like you want to go back to my place you know, like, a little <laughs> people can feel how much others respect themselves when you um i'm sure especially for women we are so in tune uh like emotionally and like uh the sixth sense kind of like that gut feeling you can feel things off of other people you know if somebody is a confident person or if they're not a confident person why it comes out and it is so obvious if you just open your eyes and look for it i kid you not i know i keep mentioning body language but it is so true it is so true if someone's walking around like this and like here you know what we're gonna do a little experiment we're gonna do an experiment okay I'm gonna play two characters and you're gonna guess which one is confident um, and which one has high self-esteem, okay? Here's number one. Okay, and here's number two. I think you know which one. I didn't say anything. I did not say anything, all I did was act a certain way with my body language. It'll carry across. And let's just say um, that he he does like ask you like, hey, like you wanna like blah, 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 blah. Like, you know, <laughs> you say no. You say no, like I'm not, I'm not that kind of lady. Like I don't do that. And you just say it once and you never say it again. He will pick up on it. And if he doesn't, like if he keeps on pushing it, he's not the man for you, he's not the one. Um, bye bye ghost. Um, he does not get access to your time and your energy no longer because that is precious, babes. It is precious and you need to value that like no other. This kind of leads right into um, high, having high self-esteem and they really are the same thing. 
because um, by, by having high self-esteem, you're automatically gonna like just like carry yourself as a more confident person. But I believe that the best way to build your self-esteem is to um, like have consistent self-care activities. Like take care of yourself, have hygiene, put effort into you, make sure that you're getting quality time by yourself. Sitting alone in your bed on your phone is not quality time with yourself. I mean like go out and do something, god damn it. Go to the gym if that is what you like. Maybe do some stretches on the floor. Um, go get yourself a cup of coffee after your classes. Go on a solo drive by yourself and listen to some music and like talk to yourself in your car. Those are quality friendships like a, like a quality friendship with yourself you are born alone and you will die alone so you might as well have a good relationship with yourself you can't escape yourself ever so make the relationship with you the best relationship that you can possibly be this is also very closely um, correlated with having boundaries but it's not handling and managing bullshit. If a man or a friend or anybody comes at you with BS and like manipulation or like treatment that is just far, far, far below bare minimum, you call bullshit and you say no. And you begin to distance yourself. Your energy and your presence is the most valuable thing that you can give to somebody and that can be taken away. If somebody is not honoring you, if they are not respecting you, if they are not treating you like a decent human being, what are you doing? You need to distance yourself. You need to have enough self-respect and enough self-worth to walk away and to no longer put up with that because you don't need to. You're not obliged to give anybody your time and your energy. And don't come at me with the, oh, but I have to, like, no. You just rather not suffer the consequences um, of like damaging that, that friendship or relationship, even though like what relationship or friendship is there even to begin with? Like if you're putting in 90% effort and they're giving 10, like <laughs> you're not losing anything when you are able to pull back your energy you put it back into yourself what happens when you put your energy back into yourself you become the main character you become the main character in your own story you do you're the celebrity people feel that like i said before people can feel they feel what you feel about yourself okay and i know that's kind of a shitty thing um especially in, if you're in a place of uh, like very low self-worth and low self-esteem, but manifestation works both ways, okay? Like if you're embodying and working on yourself, like people can feel that. And if you're feeling super, super insecure and anxious, like people can feel that too. I'm not gonna lie to you and say that it only works on the positive side. Like people feel that. So if you don't wanna give off that energy, then you need to get yourself out of that energy. Don't expect anyone else to do it for you. I certainly did not. I could not. Uh, when I was in my, my dark space, I prayed to God that somebody else could like take it away from me being like the universe or whatever. My family wished that they could have helped me more, but like it had to come down to me, my discipline and my mind. And that's what got me out of it at the end of the day. It's what got me in it and it's what got me out of it. And it will continue to be like that for our entire lives. So, get get your own shit together please please stop managing um other people's emotions other people's thoughts and feelings of course have some discernment when i say these things i'm not telling you to be some um apathetic person i'm not telling you to be a psychopath goddamn um <laughs> like just be more reserved with your energy and be careful with who you give it to only give it to people who will like treat you well that who love you back and 
when you when you do find those people and you will because there are so many of them out there you love you love them so deeply and you care and be so thoughtful about those people so deeply okay treat them how you would like to be treated put that that good energy out into the universe because honestly like you'll get it back that's just kind of how it works good karma i guess you could call it okay create some good karma for yourself and lastly with being high value um this is a little controversial but i'm gonna say it anyway because it needs to be said when it comes to social media take a look at what you're posting because if it's very provocative and very very out there and kind of like bikini pics and just like your your ass is on the screen like something about that just screams i'm so insecure look at me i've never met never met a person who is extremely stable and values themselves and um is just as like super in touch with who they are who also consistently posts their body online it's it's almost always for attention and most importantly to feel like you're desirable to feel like you're attractive and good enough okay I know this because I've done this, okay? It's so easy to post something on Instagram that's like sexy and just like hot because you will get a floodgate of comments being like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. What a baddie. And it's just like this instant gratification that takes you out of the shitty hole that you're living in just for a little bit, just for a little bit. And when you are putting yourself out there like that, what kind of people, what kind of guys do you think you're gonna attract on in? It's not the high quality ones, I'll tell you that. It's the ones that look at you, and by looking at you, I mean looking at your body and only deriving value from what you can offer them through pleasure. I'm not gonna get into that, you know what I mean, okay? I say this so carefully because you can do those sort of things and post those sort of things with the mentality of I look fucking good and I'm a confident bad bitch and like this is like what makes me feel good and this is what I want to show. That I don't have an issue with at all and I think that's wonderful. However, that is not the dominating story of what is happening because most of the the girls i see who are posting these things are cripplingly insecure and are just desperately wanting to be loved and validated i understand it's human nature and i cast no judgment on people who are in that space because i understand that it feels so shitty it feels awful and you never feel good enough it doesn't matter how many comments, it doesn't matter how many likes, there will always be a comparison game. So the best thing that I advise you to do is to stop, is to stop posting that thing, to stop posting that picture, um, to stop posting just for that one boy that you've been obsessing over for months to see, you know, stop. The only way you're genuinely going to change your mind and to change your energy is to change your actions. You need to, to start acting like somebody who, who has the main character energy. The main character is not always accessible. The main character is not accessible to just everyone who can like look. And honestly, when you're out there like that, you, where's the privacy? You know, like you're just like showing all the merchandise for everyone, there's there's nothing private about that. And like I said, it really does matter intention. 
are you intending to post that to be validated or are you intending to post that because you know that you feel so confident and that's how you would like to express yourself? Please be honest. All right, that is all that I have for you today on my four tips on how to have main character energy. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you took some information from it. Let me know through a like, a comment, whatever you like, whatever you would like to do. Subscribe. I I don't really care. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.